Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, for those of you that, that normally come to our outdoor service, thanks so much for, for being with us online today. Um, and just because of the weather, we were, able, we were uh, had to kind of switch to all online today. So welcome. Um, this morning, we're going to sing a few songs together, and then uh, Rex is going to share with us. We're continuing our series in the art of neighboring. So last week, we talked about the importance of taking the great commandment locally. So if uh, Jesus gives us this great commandment that we're to love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Um, another way he says it is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And oftentimes we get kind of trapped in this cycle of like, okay, yeah, now that we know Jesus, we're going to change the world, you know, and um, sometimes we don't tend to start with the people that are closest to us in our lives, the, the actual physical neighbors that we have and the people that are in our workplaces, the people that are right around us. And it's actually those people that God is calling us to. It, what if God actually placed you in a specific place, gave you a house or an apartment or a dorm for this particular time, this season of life that we're living through, so that you could specifically reach out and love people with the love of Jesus uh, right right where you are. Um, so that's kind of what we've been talking about, the art of neighboring. So Rex is going to share today about just time and how do we manage time when we're trying to uh, be with people and uh, how, do we, how do we make God a priority in our lives so that we make other people a priority. Um, so we're going to be looking at that today. Why don't we, we're going to pray together and I just ask, you know, wherever you are, whether you're, you've it kind of got nice out, so maybe you're out on your deck or something. Um, uh, wherever you may find yourself, just pray with me this morning. Ask God to touch your heart. Uh, ask God to, to give you an openness uh, to what he might want to speak to you this morning, specifically uh, about your neighbor and of what he might be calling you to do. Um, so take this as a holy moment and ask the Holy Spirit to really be working in your life. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much that we can be together this morning. God, I just ask that uh, you would have your way among us, that your kingdom would come and your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not just in like this service, Father, but just in our local church. God, would you have your way? God, would you be speaking through your church in powerful ways during this time? God, as you continue to to uh, use your church in our city in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic and everything that is going on in our country. Father, we pray that we would uh, follow hard after you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. God, thank you so much for this day where we can worship you, where we can be together like this. And I just pray that you would be glorified, that you'd be blessed and lifted high this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. All right. We're going to sing a few songs, and I'm pretty sure that none of you guys have ever heard this song, so that's, it's good. It's good for us. We'll stretch us out a little bit. It goes like this. There is a rock, a solid rock, a rock we build our lives upon. There is a hope, a blessed hope. Something that's 
solid rock. Father, we want our foundation of our life to be built on you, and um, we just reminded that at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, you said that there's like people that build two houses. One is the one who hears all these things and doesn't put any of them into practice, and that person's like a foolish person that built their house on the sand. But Father, when we hear your word, and not just hear it, but actually live it out in a way that touches every part of our lives, God, that we're like a wise man that built our house on the rock. And so, Father, that's how we want to be. We know that the storms of life are coming, and we want to be people that are wise, who build our lives on a strong foundation. And so, Father, I thank you for the gift that, uh, that you've given to many of us through this, that uh, we've recognized maybe areas of our lives that really weren't built on the solid foundation of Jesus, but on all kinds of other stuff in the midst of all this. And so it's left us feeling reeling and kind of wondering what hope there is for the world. But God, I just pray we'd be reminded again that our hope is found in you. We love you. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. today at, at continuing this thing about the art of neighboring. How do we neighbor well? How do we be a neighbor well? Uh, we've been uh, looking and Kyle drew out a, a map for us where we're kind of in the center and these eight different people that we can find in our neighborhood. And uh, some of you had as many as six, some of you had five, some of you had two. And so maybe this week you're kind of working through that. Now let me ask you, because I want us all to really continue to think about this, how are you doing? Have you had an opportunity uh, to talk to somebody? Had you, have you had an opportunity to get some new pieces of information uh, since we've been challenged last week? I'm not uh, sure that it, uh, some of you are thinking, wow, how in the world can I create more time opportunities when my life is already so full? How am I going to have time for even one more relationship, let alone eight new relationships with my neighboring houses all around me? Because time seems to be one of the biggest obstacles we need to overcome to be effective neighbors, right? Let me ask you this. How do you plan on spending uh, your time on things that really matter? Because if you don't have a plan, then it's really tough. Uh, to begin to uh, think of ways that you can be creative in, in developing healthy relationships with people all around you, and even healthy relationships with God and then the neighbors that God has placed in your life. Now, this might be a really good pre, uh, kind of pre-COVID question that we want to ask ourselves, maybe one that we want to think about, but, you know, are we living at a pace that allows us to be available to the people that are around us? Andy Stanley says this, it's not your determination, but your direction that determines your path. So if we're really honest with ourselves today, we probably need to clarify our plan or our, our path. Because clarity means that you have a plan and that the plan clearly states where you want to go. 
So maybe as we uh, leave today, we want to develop a plan and think about how can I be uh, intentional with developing relationships, not only with God, but also with the people in my life. Now, I don't want us to be morbid, but I've done a few funerals, and in, in, uh, on every tombstone in, in the cemetery, there's this name, and it maybe has a personal statement or something that they really enjoy or about the individual that they place on the tombstone. But under that person's name is a dash, and it's a dash from birth to death. I thought about this a few years back, looking at their life in the end, what would they tell us? What would they say to us? Now that their lives are over, what wisdom would they want to pass on to us? What were their regrets? Where did they get it right in life? See, that dash is time, and each of us are living our dash today. Question is, what are we going to do with our dash? With each passing day, our culture becomes more and more proficient in ways that we can maximize our time. We have so many time-saving technologies, and, and we've been defined so much by those. We're able to do more, learn more, and experience more in a lifetime than all the generations that have preceded us. Now, this is good, but we do have a problem. Our obsession with time has become unhealthy. Busyness has consumed us. Technology is supposed to give us extra time, and yet what we do is we seem to cram more and more into our days instead of creating margin for life and relationships that God has placed in our lives. Our obsession with squeezing out the most of our time has, become, has really come at a high cost. I mean, we have more heart disease, obesity, depression, memory problems, sleep disorders, anxiety, and high blood pressure. See, what's happened is we've become slaves to our technology. You can't not look at your phone or, or your watch when it beeps, right? I mean, it just takes up your identity. Matter of fact, there's some folks in the room right now that are looking at their watch when I said that. Our phones have created even more insulation and isolation from the very relationships that matter the most. See, Kyle told us that Jesus really challenged us to first love God with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our soul and then to love our neighbors. And so it's so important that we create opportunities to really be with God and to commune with him and to fellowship with him and allow him to pour his love into us so that we can adequately give love to others and be a neighbor to somebody else. At the beginning of this section that we're looking at in Luke chapter 10, Jesus talks to the guy about loving God and he puts some skin on it with this Good Samaritan story. And now we're going to continue to kind of think about that as we continue into this next passage. So let's think about some myths that we believe. Here's one. Someday things will settle down, and when they settle down, I'll have time to do whatever, right? Until we kind of have, that's one of the myths. Another one will, is like this, more will be enough. One more purchase, one more thing in my life, one more opportunity, one more experience, and then I'll be content, and then I'll have more time to do other stuff. Are we even kind of think like this, that everybody lives like I do? But maybe they don't. See, progress has sped up our lives. There's a term that I just learned is called profusion. And profusion is where we have more and more and more, and everything is faster and faster and faster. And what has happened is this has made us dissatisfied. And on top of that, the faster we go, the more difficult it is to stop and the greater impact it has on our life when we're hit by something like a pandemic, or where our relationships fall apart, or the uneasiness that we find ourselves in, this fear, this general fear that we find ourselves in, and it causes our addictions and our compulsions to rage. 
as we, as we have become more and more inundated with activities in our lives, we find it more and more difficult in breaking away from the life that we now are living. It's hard for us. It's hard for us. So during this COVID pandemic, we have all been given this opportunity to step back a little bit and figure out where we spend our time. And in the midst of this, some of us have pushed to the scriptures and some of us have spent time with God, but some of us have just allowed more things to enter into our life through technology and we still are too busy to develop our relationship with him. And consequently, what happens is we hurt ourselves when we do. And we hurt our kids and the people that God has placed in our lives. One of the most powerful stories in the Bible is this, about this allocation of time. This is where Jesus tells us to, to live a different way of life. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 10. We're going to look at verse 38 through 42. Or if you have your phone, use your Bible app. And uh, we're going to be at Luke 10, 38 through 42. While you're looking at it up quickly, I'll get a drink. I haven't played the drums in a while, and so I'm out of shape, and I've lost my chops. And so, man, playing the drums, I'm sweating like crazy back there. So uh, I need a little bit of moisture. Let's look at uh, verses 38. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing, and she came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. See, Martha was distracted by the preparations of hosting Jesus and the disciples, and she missed out on spending time with Jesus. She's rushed, rushed, and she misses out on the time, uh, the main thing that, that God wanted her to do with her time. See, she's doing good things, right? But it wasn't what Jesus said was most important. What Martha wasn't, was doing wasn't really bad. Uh, she, was being reprimanded. she wasn't being reprimanded for serving Jesus. What she was being reprimanded was for not spending time with him. Jesus is saying we need to say no to good things sometimes to center our lives around the main thing. And the main thing is him. Sometimes it's so easy to do things for Jesus, right? You ever done that? And not with him, right? It's so easy for us to do that. He teaches us again and again about abiding in him. And when we spend time with him and he with us and he pours his love into us and through us, then the Bible says we bear his fruit in the lives of people around us. He also tells us it's so important to, to yoke up with him and to do life with him. But here's the scoop. You got to train yourself to do that. You got to train yourself to spend time with God. And when you do, we, we have to like purposefully carve out our time with them. Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Now, I want to tell you, culturally, this is not the norm. Culturally, Martha is doing what is appropriate by being in the kitchen and serving Jesus. Mary is going against the very culture in which she lives by sitting at Jesus' feet and focusing on him and making him the main thing in her life. This adoration and worship of Christ was, was not really culturally correct. Martha's more became less and Mary's less became more. So as Christ followers, we're, we're to look at our time and we're to look at it differently. You see, our time is, has a heavenly or an eternal timeline to it. And so he cares about what happens to you and me in our lives, and he cares about what we do with our time and the moments that he's given us to spend. Time is never meant to be a burden, right? It's really a gift. Time is a gift. 
So we need to make sure that we every day connect with Jesus. And in doing so, then we can connect properly with others. As we connect with Christ and his love, we are now poised to connect others to Jesus as well. I believe people connected with Jesus connect others to Jesus. It's just the way it works. So friends, I want you to know that he cares about your day today. He cares about what's going on in your life. Matter of fact, he says that we can cast all our cares on him because he cares for us. And so he cares for you, but he also cares about your tomorrow. He cares about every single day you live. And he doesn't want you to fret about it. He wants you to yoke up with him and find his burden to be easier and light. He holds my tomorrow and he knows what my tomorrow holds. So I'm able to make the most out of today because I'm connected with him and I can trust him about my tomorrows. See, connected people can connect well to others. Are you connected to Christ? Are you spending time with him? Are, are you carving out some time intentionally, training yourself to be his disciple, allowing his love to so infiltrate your life that you're loving others like he wants you to. You're seeing other people like he wants you to. You're seeing this world and all the things that are going on in your life like he wants you to. See, here's the cool thing. You and I have a power or a choice to connect. We have this power of choice that God has given us. It's a gift, and when we use it his, freely for him and wisely for him, then our life can be amped up because Jesus said he came to give us life and life to abundance. Sometimes we need to go against the cultural norms like Mary. And we need to create space in our lives for our neighbors. We don't need to go into to the garage and shut the garage and sit on the back deck and never spend any time with our friends and neighbors. H have you carved out some time? Are you thinking about ways that you can not only connect with God, but connect with your neighbors? See, here's what I had to do in my life. I had to practice elimination. I had to say no to some stuff. None of us like to do that, right? None of us want to honestly look at the motivations of our actions and our decisions. Why? Because it's painful. It gets ugly. Uh, any, anytime you, you, you take the time to look at your life and ask why you do what you do, sometimes it's really painful. Like asking, why do I work so many hours? Why are my kids involved in so many activities? Why do I spend so much time at the gym trying to look buff? You can tell I don't, right? Why do I volunteer so much? I mean, what's the scoop? Why, why am I doing what I'm, what I'm doing? You see, we fill our lives with all these time-consuming activities, and I think sometimes we do it because we really don't want to face who we really are. See, if you look at Jesus' life, he had healthy rhythms, and people wanted him all the time, and they wanted to spend time with him all the time. They wanted to hear more of him, yet he knew that he had to get away and retreat and be quiet with the Father and to listen to the Father and to know the Father's will and then do the Father's will. And why I think he was so effective is that he connected with the Father and he expressed or was experiencing God's love for him in such a way that it would enable him to pour out his love to others. Jesus asked Martha, to say no to ministry and serving, to sit first and be centered around him. That's the main thing. It's so easy to do stuff for Jesus and not be with Jesus. And this is so important for us today. I started reading Experiencing God uh, by Henry Blackaby again. I've read it a, a while back. Our church, even 10 years ago, I uh, did a weekend, and we spent some time thinking about this. But Henry says this, 
A love relationship with God is more important than any single factor of your life. Everything about knowing him and experiencing him, everything about knowing his will depends on the quality of your love relationship with him. If that's not settled, nothing, he says, in your life will be right. I really believe this is true. See, I know you want to be a good neighbor who loves God and really loves others. And so today, I want to say, take the time to invest in your relationship with God. Make that the most important thing of your life. Invest your life in him. I think this is really a good lesson for all of us today. To be occupied with Jesus is more important than to be occupied for him. In closing, maybe God is calling you to assess your life in this COVID-19 world in which we find ourselves in. And maybe he's calling you to give up something good so that you can make room for the main thing. See, Martha wasn't doing something bad. She was doing something good. Matter of fact, later on in the scriptures, we find that Mary's helping Martha again feed some folk. So find some time to carve out, to spend time with God and make that your main thing. See, when our lives are out of, out of balance, here's the scoop. It's so easy for us to get frazzled. Anybody frazzled? Instead of having the peace that passes understanding, you're just wiped out and frazzled and tired and you feel overwhelmed all the time. It's so easy to become consumed with fear and worry. And that fear and worry can produce this con inner conflict that's going on in our, in our hearts and lives. But then what it does is it causes disharmony and we find ourselves having troubles with others. And I, I think, too, it's easy to pray for the wrong things. You ever done that? It's easy to get busy uh, doing the things that are nice, but not kingdom impacting. So Jesus is calling us today to him, to abide in him, to yoke up with him, and experience his light, easy to bear life, and the lighter burden that he so wants us to have. Matter of fact, he says to experience his rest. Are you finding time to rest in him? Today, you have the power to choose to do something about it, to make a real life impacting decision. As we go our way today, what is God asking you to do? Maybe you want to say, God, what is your heart for me? What is the next step that I need to take? What do you need to do in my life so that I'll make the main thing the main thing? What is the main thing that you want me to focus on today? Whatever God's telling you to do, you can text us and let us know. Uh, we, we were here to serve you and support you. And so we want to pray for you. And, and as you begin to fill out that, that thing that Kyle did for us, you know, the, the having your house in the middle and, and finding eight folk to, to be involved with and to pray for and to put your life into, as you begin to do that, let God speak to you. Ah, oh, God, to open up some time for you to be able to be a real neighbor as we continue working on the art of neighboring. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you that we can serve you and be with you and walk with you each and every day. And your grace is sufficient, God, in our lives. You, you pour out your love upon us. You give us everything we need for life and godliness. And you give us your word so that we can know you intimately and walk in a fellowship relationship with you. And, and you teach us through your word how you feel about people and how people really matter to you. 
Lord, you sacrificed your very son on the cross for people. You already told us without uh, us even wondering how great you love us, how deep is your love for us. And, and when Jesus stretched his arms out on the cross and gave himself for the entire world to be a sacrifice for sin, that was the biggest word picture we could ever experience. So, Lord, we thank you for your love. And we pray for anybody here today that doesn't know you yet, that they would trust Christ as their Savior, that they would believe by faith that Jesus died on the cross for their sins. And in doing so, they would give you their entire life, that they would be occupied with you and do life with you in every way. Oh, God, help us as your followers today to learn to prioritize our lives rightly, to be so heavenly minded that maybe we'd be earthly good, that we would invest our lives into people. Lord, help us to so fall in love with you. And as we do, you would pour your love in us and through us so that we would be salt and light in the world in which you placed us. There are so many people in fear today, so many people that are hurting, so many people that need your love. So help us, O oh God, to be conduits of your love as we express your love and grace in the world in which you placed us. And God, I would also pray that rather than spend more time doing other things, that we would be intentional with carving out time to be with you. And in doing so, Father, we would fall in love with you, you afresh and anew. That, Lord, we, we would confess sin that we have in our lives so that we could be relationally clean with you, so that we could hear from you, so that we can make necessary steps in our lives, Lord, to uh, create purposefully time to be a neighbor to the folks that you've placed in our world. And for that, God, we just give you thanks. Thank you that you've given us this power of choice and the ability to do the things that please you. And you've given us the power of your Holy Spirit that lives within us, that enables us to do the things that please you. So Lord, we just give you thanks for all that you've given us by your grace. And we pray today that we'll be honest with ourselves that will look truthfully as to why we do what we do and give us, Lord, the uh, strength to say no to stuff so that we can say yes to you. And for that, God, we just give you thanks and praise for all that you do in our lives. We bless you and pray that you would be honored by the choices that we make today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. so much for that um i think we all need that reminder sometimes it's just easy for us to i guess i'll speak with somebody specifically that does ministry stuff it's easy to get kind of trapped in doing stuff for god and just not making time to just be with him and spend time with him um so yeah, really good word. Thank you for that. We'll close out by just singing this last song. And um, this is sort of a chance for us to connect in the way that we just talked about, just remembering God's incredible faithfulness to us, his grace to us. Um, so it goes like this.
Thank you so much for your grace, God. We are, we just need it every single day. So thank you that you're so gracious to us and that even, even in these times where you're clearly trying to teach us to slow down and we still just keep just filling our schedules with crazy stuff, God, your grace is still sufficient to just meet us in this moment. And so, God, we just ask you that 
that you would help us to sit at your feet, to worship you, and that everything else that we do would flow out of this love relationship that we have with you, God. We love you. Thank you for this time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for joining us today online.